Hi, I'm Larry. I have an experience to share, which I hope will be helpful to you. Have you ever looked back on your life and wondered, what if I had done this instead of that? You know, those if only situations, those coulda, shoulda, wouldas. Sure, I'm guessing we all have. I tend to avoid doing that because it usually isn't helpful. But there is one time over 50 years ago when something happened that changed my life for the better. I'd like to share that with you. All those years ago in the summer of 1970, I was in a motorcycle accident which resulted in a major spine injury and paralysis from the waist down. I was 18 years old, had just completed my freshman year of college. I was a fit young man standing six foot five, strong and in good health, having paid my way through college, working on farms, moving irrigation pipe, because I was tall, <laughs> and setting logging chokers in the woods during the summer, which paid pretty well. It was a quiet Sunday morning in the University of Oregon campus neighborhood, and I was on my way to visit my girlfriend at University Park when suddenly a car pulled out in front of me at 23rd and Alder. I laid the motorcycle over but still had enough speed that I struck the side of the car. I was lying in the middle of the street and people began to gather around me, so I tried to get up to drag my motorcycle over to the side out of the way. I would try to sit up, but couldn't get up all the way. I didn't know it at the time, but two vertebrae in my lower back had shattered and severed my spinal cord. As I was trying to get up, instead of bending down through the lower back and sacrum, I was bending at the brake, compounding the injury and bleeding internally. I'm sharing these details so you can better understand what happened next. I couldn't understand why I couldn't get up, so I looked down, grabbed my leg, and realized with shock that I couldn't feel the touch of my hand. I laid my head down on the pavement and remember thinking, I've really done it this time. The next thing I knew, I was out of my body, looking down at the accident scene. That was likely due to my internal injuries, and I was having what has now become known as a near-death experience, an NDE. I wasn't out of my body for a long time, but I remember every detail from looking down at the people who had come out of their homes, huddled in a semicircle around my body, the murmur of their voices as they spoke softly to each other, and how curious people looked from directly above. The most profound thing that happened, though, was a cognitive change. I still had an identity, a sense of me, but the instinct to survive was gone. In fact, I felt relieved that I was no longer trapped in the body, with a sense that I had completed what I was here to do. Definitely an odd thought for a youthful 18-year-old. I also felt a powerful energy surging inside. It was growing exponentially and never sublimated the entire time I was out of my body. Most profoundly, I felt a complete sense of wholeness surrounded by love. I was ready to go, but something someone said at the accident scene caused me to pause and look down to see what was going on. I realized that the people standing in a semicircle thought the body lying on the pavement was me. They were talking together quietly, and I tried to tell them the body wasn't me, that I was right here above them, but no one looked up. Frustrated, I tried to tell them again in a louder voice, but still no one looked up. Then another odd thought for an 18-year-old popped into my head. 
When no one else will listen, a woman will. I looked down to find a woman in the group, but could not tell gender. They were talking so softly, and their heads looking down at my body covered their torsos, so I could not tell people apart. They all had long hair, which was common in 1970, and from above, everyone's parts in the hair looked the same. Then I spotted a person who was wearing pink hair curlers, those snap-on foam curlers that I had seen my sisters wear at night before going to bed. I directed all my growing energy at that woman, at her head, <laughs> and shouted in an angry voice, Woman, look up! Of course, she and everyone else at the scene could not hear me, and she didn't look up. Now, in a rage, I intended to scream out something derogatory, but before I got the word out, there was a loud bang, and I was back in my body. Isn't that interesting? Obviously, I wasn't ready to go. I clearly had some work to do on myself, what was it that caused me to go suddenly back into my body? I, I didn't see anyone spiritually while I was out of my body. Why did I suddenly go back? I, I believe it was because I was angry and I wasn't listening. I, here I was surrounded by love and yet I was just assuming its existence. I wasn't sharing my love. I wasn't being empathetic or compassionate that the people at the accident scene were worried because they could see I was dying, the body, and they couldn't hear me. And instead of having empathy and understanding, I was angry. And I believe that's why I went, I went back in. I remember little about the ambulance ride to the hospital, nor the surgery that followed, but I have a clear, detailed memory of my NDE at the accident scene. And these are the lessons I learned and try to live by. Be compassionate, have some empathy and understanding. Sometimes there's a good reason why people can't seem to hear you. Be quiet and listen more, especially to that soft inner voice of spirit. Don't let anger arise. It blocks everything else out. It literally cuts you off from spirit. Love deeply. Love with all your heart, even if it hurts. It is what we are here to learn, and I believe, the gateway to transcendence. It's what I was lacking. Now, over 50 years later, I've entered the golden stage of my life. I think back to when I left the hospital after a six-month recovery all those years ago, venturing forth for the first time using a wheelchair on campus. Needless to say, it was a big change for me mentally and physically, going from six foot five, being used to looking down at people when I was making eye contact and speaking, and now switching to four foot eight and looking up for the most part when talking with others. The accident was a major life changing event. The path I was on had changed, giving me two choices either to look back the way I had come, pining about the way things might have been, or to move forward, exploring this new path with hope. And the latter was my choice. The NDE I had experienced was a wonderful gift that made the decision much easier. I believe we are here to learn to listen, to open our hearts to love. Namaste.